All right. Uh, hopefully this is working. I don't know what you guys are seeing. So just pray for us. For some reason today, it seems like it does not want to cooperate with us. Um, I don't know what recorded on the other side. Hit us up if you can see us. All right. Let us know. If you can see us, let us know so we'll. Is it working? All right. Well, hopefully you're able to see us. I do see one person showing up. So if the one person is showing up, tell me if you can see us because we don't know. And we're just going to go forth um, in Jesus name. And we've been talking about forgiveness and um, forgiveness is a, a, a it seems to be a, um, a topic that uh, a lot of people. Thank you. Um, Tracy, thank you. Um, that a lot of people struggle with and, and, and we don't realize it's not something that for some, it can happen instantaneously for others. It takes time and we don't need to, um, uh, question what, you know, whether or not, um, how it works, it just takes time. And, it's because we see it to be a process. Thank you, sister. I see you too. Um, and so it's part of a growing process. And when we grow in Christ, one of the, it's one of the um the I think the worst strongholds we have because we don't realize that unforgiveness is so much deeply embedded in who we are. Let me tell you something about um, unforgiveness. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Our lack of forgiveness, we try to justify by be, being unaccountable for our behavior towards others. Amen. We try to justify why we don't forgive. Oh, I don't mess with them because in 1932, they stepped on my shoe. You know, just just dumb stuff like that. But we try to justify it. And as children of uh, of uh, as children of God or believers, there should be a mindset change. You say, "Let this mind also be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus." And and we need to begin to change our way of thinking. Now, understand, uh, in our way of thinking. We need to understand that God knows what's in us. So he uses those character builders to make us. And where you were um, maybe a hellion in the streets, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I now need you to be a soldier in, in Christ. Mm -hmm. And my thing is this, people have it really twisted. They think that because you are saved that you, you're supposed to become this meek and mild person. Get it. I think that in your walk with Christ, because, you know, all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and that are called according to his purpose. So my thing is this. Here we have Paul, who was a persecutor of the church, who had to go back and literally eat his words and justify that, you know, as a just you know, as a persecutor of the church, now I'm a believer. So there had to be a mindset change. And even as believers, there was a mindset change, but with the same tenacity that Paul uh, destroyed the church, he represented Christ, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know? So with the same tenacity, we need to have that when we um, deal with forgiveness mm -hmm. and, and, and unforgiveness. Um, but this week we're talking about breaking the cycle. Um, and in the book of first Thessalonians, um, I'm just going to read this real quick. First Thessalonians 5 and 15. And it says, see that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, 
both among yourselves and to all men. And so be sure that no one repays a bad turn with a bad turn. Good should be your objective always among yourselves and in the world at large. Now, understand me when I say there are some people mm -hmm. who make it just hard to forgive them because they keep slicing in the same vein. And I'm going to tell you this. The Bible said, call, mark them that cause discord amongst the brethren. And my thing is this, I am not going to put myself, I should not have to subject myself mm -hmm. to your meanness, your nastiness, your pitfall. Because that's where they, there's, there's a pit. And the thing is this, they want to drag you down mm -hmm. because it'll make you to the point where, listen, I know I, I there are people that I just don't bother with mm -hmm. because of their behavior. And with that, it's not that I, I don't forgive them. Mm -hmm. I forgive you, but I know not to be in your presence. You know, I know not, I don't want to be moving in your circle because you do the same thing all the time, you know, and we need to begin to uh, break those cycles where we feel that, oh, well, God said to forgive them. And if I don't forgive them, then God won't forgive me. But I'm not going to subject myself to you. Mm -hmm. Pastor Lewis. Well, 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 let me just read my scripture in Matthew, right? Matthew, the 14th verse, sixth chapter, excuse me, in the 14th verse. It said, For <clears throat> if we forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if we forgive not men, their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trust, trespasses. So, so, so I, I need you to understand that, that forgiveness is for you, all right? It, it's for you to forgive. Because I was telling um, somebody the other day, I said, I have to forgive because I'm trying to get into heaven. I, I, want, I want to make it into heaven. But in the same token, I want God to strengthen me so that if I have to be in your presence or need to be in your presence, that what you did to me no longer lingers in my spirit or cause me to look at you sideways or cause me to get upset. I don't stew on what you did to me. And oftentimes um, when, it, when, when it comes to forgiveness, because they hurt you in a certain pla place, we're, 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 we're fearful or we're angry at the fact that they just might try to hurt us in the same place again. But for me, forgiveness is being in your presence and everything is fine. The way I feel towards you, the way I think about you, everything is copacetic. <clears throat> you understand know what I'm saying? So, and, and I know that it takes God for that to happen. It takes God for that to happen depending on the end of individual. Some people don't want to forgive. Some people like holding on to the fact that you hurt me. Mm, but I think it's a choice. And, and, and you know, um, Pastor Shiloh made a valid point on last week. You can choose to be offended. And I think this, and it was like, um, as I was sitting here, the God said that um, unforgiveness and the assault is upon the flesh. And I said, my goodness, because he said in John 6 and 63, it is the spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and in our life. So then the, the, the thing is this, your, 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 your flesh man is being assaulted. Your ego is being assaulted. You know, your character, you know, all of these are, are you really what they say you are when they, when they come, when they come at you, are you really, um, the dumping ground for them? And I, and, 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 and you can make a choice not to, it does not mean that you don't forgive them because you choose not, you make a choice because when the thing is this, if they're not sorrowful. That's just using wisdom. I mean, we can agree to disagree, but I believe it's just wisdom because I'm not going to um, subject myself to you if you're just always mean and nasty. Oh, I get that. I get that because wisdom justified. So I think there has to be some separation. You see, because 
why would I put up with your foolishness when I know you ain't gonna cut up anyway? I, I need not be bothered with that. But let me just look at some. Okay, let me, let me just share some. The word forgiveness means it's something just think about. It means to wipe the slate clean, to pardon, to cancel a debt. When we wrong someone or, or and vice versa, when someone wrongs us, we seek their forgiveness in order for the relationship to be restored. Forgiveness is not granted because a person deserves to be forgiven. No one deserves to be forgiven. Forgiveness is an act of love. Like you said, it's a choice, mercy, and grace. Forgiveness is a decision, like you said, to not hold something against another person despite what they have done to you. So on that, on, on that same, okay, let's look at it this way. How do you know you have forgiven that person if you just continue to avoid that person? But it's a choice because my thing is um, you can tell a tree by the fruit that it bears. And if every time we're together, that's like putting your purse down when you got that cousin Bobo who you know is a thief. And every time you put your purse down, you come up short $20. You go to the family reunion or the family's house and put your purse down and Bobo is there. And lo and behold, Bobo done stole another $20. And so the thing is this, how many times you going to let Bobo keep stealing $20 from you? And the books say, how many times should we forgive? Okay. That many but times. That many times. I'm going to keep forgiving you, but I'm not going to keep leaving my purse there. Okay, I understand wisdom. Of course not. And I think it's all based in wisdom. It does not mean that I forgive you any, my forgiveness is any less or any different because I choose not to be around you. Because even in my forgiveness, there is still a scar. There's still residue of the damage that you've done. And until God heals me in that area, until God heals me in that area, I don't want room to be reopened. Just let me forgive you and we yeah. leave it right there. That's so if true. your tree, That's if you true. still got tr prunes, tree, and it's supposed to be plums, it's God. It takes God. You, you said it. The other week, that does not happen overnight, but I think we, we have to take that before. what it is and call it out say it, put God on it. Right. Then, then put God on it. Because I believe that's how forgiveness comes and then I'm able to look that devil and feel nothing. No pain. No fear. You understand? 